We're happy to present Lena Ross from Change Hacks, talking to Dr. Jean Borden from Monash University's Faculty of Art, Design and Architecture about design thinking and how it intersects with change management. Hi, I'm Lena Ross from Change Hacks, and some of you may know that I love exploring ways to hack for change. And one of the ways we hack for change is to explore different disciplines that intersect with change management, because we draw on a lot of di different disciplines to actually do that. And one of the buzzwords at the moment is design thinking as a discipline. And because of that, I have Dr. Jean Borden here with me today to chat about that. Now, Jean, you're from the Monash Art, Design and Architecture School, is that right? That is correct, Lynn, and thank you for the invitation, Ian. Ian, welcome. Um, so that's commonly known as MARDA. Yes, because universities love an acronym, so Of course, MARDA, another or, acronym for you. <laughs> or MADA, as yeah. some people like to call it. So, um, so can you tell us a little bit about MARDA? And the role that you play in MARTA before we go into design thinking. Sure. So MARTA is Monash's art, is art design and architecture, mm -hmm. and Monash is kind of creative hub. So lots of sort of energy revolves around kind of art, architecture and design, but brings in lots of the other disciplines that, that Monash has to offer as well. Uh, so it has a kind of thriving community of artists and designers that come in from the industry, but also work from within the building as, as well. Mm -hmm have undergraduate programs, postgraduate programs, and has actually got a really long history at Caulfield as yeah. well. So we've been there since, uh, design and art has been there since the 1940s, okay. and um, architecture arrived more recently, mm -hmm. um, about 10, 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah, and your role in that? Sure. <laughs> You asked me. Uh, uh, but no, that's all right. It's, uh, I shouldn't ask double double no, questions no, in the should, one here. Go. To <laughs> yeah. uh, so I'm the deputy head of the design department. Okay. No, yes. And um, if we take so let's let's put design thinking into that context, mm -hmm. right? Because that's where I went and did a one day course in design you thinking, did. which is that's how right. I got to meet you. And um, if we were so for the uninitiated, um, how would you define design thinking? Well, design thinking, you kind of rightly introduced it before as a bit of a buzzword, but it, it's actually much richer than that. It's a much more interesting concept. It's about creative problem solving but or creative solutions, but it's also about creative problem defining, kind of working out what your problems might okay. be so that you can then kind of really creatively work around what the solutions to that problem might actually, how it might manifest itself in a contemporary world rather than kind of relying on traditions that you can look forward to, to thinking about new ways of solving those problems. I, l I love what you say about problem defining and problem solving mm. and I'm going to hold that thought because I just want to pause for a moment and just um, let the people watching know where we are because we're actually at the State <laughs> Library mm. which is in Melbourne. It's beautiful. In Victoria. And the reason I wanted to pause there was you told me a story about this library and design thinking which really resonated with me mm -hmm. and I think it would be worth everyone else hearing that as well. Sure, sure. The State Library in Victoria is one of my most favourite places to be go. But the story behind it also is kind of a, an inspiring one. <clears throat> uh, so the, the State Library is almost 170 years old mm -hmm. and if there's one institution that can survive that long we need to kind of look at and it's because it's been able to adapt to change. It's all of the disruptions for over the centuries have kind of, you really should have defined it as kind of archaic and old fashioned. Yeah. But it's actually survived because it's adapted to change. Wow. It's embraced every form of communication so that, um, <clears throat> you know, that you can go into the library now. And it's a community of people who are still interested in learning and communicating. And that's been its basic defining principle yeah. for the last 150 years when it was first established as a colonial site of um, you know, learning, it was about making sure that the city grew and it can only grow if it's kind of intellectually stimulated. So the library yeah. was there for that purpose. Yeah, I like that. I really like that story and the fact that it's had that enduring impact. Mm, and then the link, you made that link with change. And when I think about um, design thinking and those type of stories, I always like to think of the business application mm -hmm. of, um, the, uh, the design thinking principles and how they hang with change management and intersect. 
And I, one of the things I come across when I talk about design thinking as a capability for change people, and I'm going to actually explain how I define that capability. Sure. I define it, and I've got my notes here, as a solution-focused and bis a human-centered approach to create the future for customers and employees. And when I hear the story about the State Library, mm. I feel like they actually had that intent in mind when they created that space. Absolutely. Um, and with that, there's also that myth that design thinking, because I think of the word design, yeah. sometimes alienates people. That's right. And it's and design thinking is actually not a designing. So it's not about the mm. artifact at the end. Design thinking is about the methods people use to think through a problem. So when anyone does a design thinking exercise, yeah. they're not going to kind of suddenly go into their back shed and knock up a chair over the wall. Yeah, end. okay. They're thinking through their own problems, their own lens that mm -hmm. they work in, but thinking through it in the way that a designer might. And you mentioned before about people and central to every design solution or in fact design problem is people. And if we get that wrong, the design simply doesn't work. Yeah. And that can be explored in every area, not just in design. It's not just about objects and things. It's a, yeah. It's a, a way of operating uh, intellectually in the yeah. world. So, so when you say that, it, it says to me, this is the quintessential people-centric approach Absolutely. to developing yeah. a solution. Yeah. And if I, if I take it to um, my world, which yeah. is change management, I can see the connection with when you design something, you're designing either a product or a service, mm -hmm. and you're designing something new. So when you design something new, you're introducing change. So in an organisational context, when you're looking for a solution or you want to come up with a new product or service to stay competitive in the market today yeah. where change is the new normal, I see design thinking as, as a critical skill for business people and particularly change professionals. And I'm starting to use it a lot really? in you, my practice. How are you using it? Okay, it's a good question. So how um, I've been using it has been, I've used if, if we look at all the typical approaches and artifacts that go with design thinking, there's something called a journey map. Yeah, that's correct. And um, the journey map starts to explore why, um, what people are going to be doing yeah. or are currently doing. That's correct. Um, and thinking and feeling. So I use the journey map to explore the current state for our end user or our client with what they're doing, thinking and feeling and yeah. what the future state might mm -hmm. be. And that really helps me through that journey map process to understand the gaps Fantastic. and the opportunities. But what I have found really useful, this was an, almost an unexpected discovery for me, mm -hmm. was speaking about, um, because, dis, because the journey map allows you to explore what they're doing and thinking and feeling, it legitimised a conversation about thoughts and, um, and feelings. Right. Which that's exactly sometimes, what it's supposed to do. exactly, and, and that's what I like about it because sometimes change management gets hung up on process. Yes, as as a lot of business processes do. Yeah, and I think sometimes change people have lost sight of the fact that it's it's a people centric discipline as well. Mm. What we're trying to do, we want to yeah. help people adopt. That's right, because you know if we look at business, that you have customers, you have staff, and you have management. Mm -hmm. But what defines all of them is actually the singular notion that they are people. And that design thinking can actually impact on all of those uh, stakeholders, I guess, for want of a better word. Every one of those people contribute to the success of the company. The, the, the staff and the, uh, and the commitment of the staff, the, the management and how interesting and interested they yeah. are in kind of pushing their company forward. But ultimately, it's the people who engage with them from the outside world. If they don't engage with them, they don't yeah. succeed at all. Exactly. Mm. And even if um, I found in the workplace, even if the change we're introducing or the new product we're introducing is, is technology, mm -hmm. it still requires a behaviour change and an Absolutely. adoption. Yeah. So we're still, if, if we all, you know, it's like all roads point to Rome, all mm -hmm. roads will still point back to the people. Yeah. And that's why I found particularly design thinking a very, very useful process. And what it's done by me doing the journey mapping early in the change process, if you want to call it a process, is. Um, Engaging people that early provides that deeper engagement. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I will go in not knowing the answers, but it gives me permission to ask those questions with that beginner's mindset. Yeah. It's actually essential that you don't yeah. know the answers. Like design thinking is entirely about not knowing the answers and actually using those methods to discover answers or discover questions as well. Yeah. 
It took me a while for my mindset to get used to that though, <laughs> like going into something and not knowing all the answers. But once I actually tested the process or tested the approach, I realized how great it was yeah. and how it served the change practice really well to do that. Mm -hmm. And that early engagement really opened that path for co-creation, which I found useful. Yeah, that's right. Really useful um, towards yeah. you know when we were uh, implementing that's the change. Right. Co-creation is incredibly inclusive as yeah. well, so it doesn't alienate people. It brings them into you know defining what a problem might be, but also resolving what that problem might be. So everyone, from regardless of what kind of layer or level they might be within a company or organisation, inviting them in means that they become a you know, much more embedded part of yeah. the, uh, the way a company can move forward. And um, so with things like, did you use personas as well? Yes, like, we did, yeah. yeah. So yeah do you want to at, explain that a little yeah. bit for us? <laughs> personas? Yeah. yeah, absolutely, yeah. very quickly. <laughs> a persona is where lots of research is done in particular types of people so that we create archetypes rather than stereotypes. Yeah. There's no place for stereotypes in design things, there's no place for stereotypes in the world. But in archetypes, where we understand what a particular type of person will be, um, or where a particular type of person will be, or how they're acting, um, what sort of behaviour they yeah. engage with, what sort of things actually kind of they're fearful of, uh, is really useful in coming up with solutions that are particularly for that group of people. Not just one person, but a group of people. Can yeah. be defined as a community. Yeah, it's like a composite mm, character, right. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. We have used personas as well when we haven't been able to get everyone in the room. Mm -hmm. but we've been able to engage enough people to kind of create yeah. that composite character. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm doing a lot of work in that space, and obviously you're doing a lot of work in yes. that space, and it's been great that the business school, Monash Business School and MADA have been able to also understand that intersection between design thinking and the business um, and the business context. If, if people um, watching this want to find out more about design thinking, what would you recommend they do? Um, go to Google. But if you can uh, go into Google, there's actually, we have a, a number of undergraduate programs that you can actually enrol into through um, as an outside mm -hmm. person. Okay. And they're, uh, they're actually called design thinking, so they're really easy to find. And partially done on on site but largely done online so they're actually okay. quite accessible for an external public uh, but there's an extraordinary amount of design thinking content that is simply online uh, D school that comes yeah out I love these that work from D school Audio. Stanford yeah there's an yeah. amazing amount and they largely put their stuff online that you can access it's a really easy um, body of work to access so it's not hard to find information. They've been very generous. With they are. Their, they're um, incredibly with generous. Their, with their information. But it also works for them because they understand people. Yeah. Like they yeah. are incredibly successful yeah. because they've given away content. Yeah. It's a, a unique kind of um, selling proposition. It's a mindset in itself, mm, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. And generous. Yeah. Well. So from a and from a change management perspective, I guess um, I've been very grateful for the um, generosity of D School and Stanford, mm. and of course Monash Marta. Um, and your insights and what I what I offer the change community are around are also not just around blogs and white papers that I've got on my website but I'm starting to run workshops on where design thinking meets change management and um, soon to be released is a book Hacking for Change which has a whole chapter dedicated to design thinking as a mindset that is much needed now for the capability of a mm. change practitioner. That's fantastic. You know what you need for that book? You need a design school to help you design it. I'm onto it. I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm onto that. Well, Jean, thank you so much. It's been great being in front of an iconic place oh, no, like the stunning. State Library with a fabulous story and great to have your time today to talk through how these two fantastic disciplines, change management and design thinking, actually intersect with that people-centric approach. Absolutely. Thank you, Lena. Thank you. If you enjoyed this clip, you may also like to look at Lena's website for more clips on her YouTube channel and other free resources such as white papers.